Uh, Chronic SE says, being that you're good friends with Tom Sachs, any work with the Neistat brothers in the past? Uh, no, um, I have never even met Casey, which seems peculiar because we've traveled in some similar in some similar zones. Uh, no, but I've spent a, I've spent some time with Van Neistat, and Ni Van has this quote which I'm still telling people, which I love. Is Van and Tom and I were sitting around and talking about science and math. And Van said, I'm great at math. He said to me, I'm great at math. I'm just not that good with numbers. Which is such a beautiful and to my mind, deep, deep understanding of what math really is. What I think Van was referring to was as a filmmaker and an editor, he is always, he's working with an aesthetic algorithm, but it's in here and he doesn't have access to the whole algorithm. He can just do things and try them and they make sense if they fit the algorithm and they don't if they don't. But that is math. There is math going on in figuring out the flow of an order of shots and the way in which they cut and the timing in which they cut. Those are all boilable into mathematical problems, but because the algorithm is in this soft tissue here, we have to do the creative and iterative process to learn about that algorithm. I've always really, really, really appreciated that insight that he gave me about math there. Yep, and I use it in talks all the time when I'm talking about science because, you know, people say I'm not really a math person. And what I like about what he said is, and the reason I repeat it is it expands a, a definition of math to be more inclusive. Yeah. Um, Christina Hall says, oh, this is lovely. Do you think a bullwhip can be made out of duct tape? Totally. Totally. Recognize that a bullwhip, which is effectively a tapered wave generator, Yes, so a bullwhip is one diameter at its handle, and it is a very thin diameter at the other end. So let's take a normal six foot bullwhip, which might be one inch in diameter at this end, and weigh out here a 16th inch of di in diameter when it gets to the fall uh, before the cracker. Um, and the way that a bullwhip achieves that taper is both uh, by using a reduction of the number of laces being used in the braid, but also in tapering the laces in those braids, both. So the, the laces out at the handle might be a quarter inch wide and they might be a 16th inch wide way out at the end before the fall. I know I'm giving terms that are part of the anatomy of a whip. Um, and I don't think it's within the purview of this video for me to describe to you exactly how, what the, all those terms really mean. But suffice to say, I think that you could, if you wanted to make a bullwhip out of duct tape, you would need to make several layers of duct tape to create your leather. You'd want it to be more dimensional than just one or two layers of duct tape. You probably want it to be like five layers of duct tape. And then you want, however long you're gonna make that whip, the laces are gonna be 1.6 or 1.75 that length. So if you want a six foot bull whip, you kind of have to make 10 foot laces. And they have to taper across 10 feet from a quarter inch down to a 16th of an inch. And then as you, over, as you overlay them, you know, you do the first belly, which is probably four laces that taper and they go out to like three feet. And then you do the second belly, which is let's say six or eight laces and they go out to, uh, 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 you know, another length. And then you do the final laces. And th again, by changing the weight and changing the number of laces, you often on the final pass, you'll do a 12 plate braid that you're dropping two laces every 18 inches until you get to like four or six laces out at the end. Yes, it's totally possible to make a whip out of duct tape. I am not sure I'm interested in doing it, but if anybody watching does do it, I would love to see your output. That sounds like an absolutely thrilling, thrilling build. Michael Partlow asks if I've ever built a screen accurate Ark of the Covenant for my own collection. Could you grab the cherub? It's over by the astronauts. Um, no, I have not yet made an Ark of the Covenant. Um, I have 
all of the parts of an Ark of the Covenant, which I bought from some guys on the RPF that make a magnificent, magnificent copy. This is one of the cherubs from the Ark of the Covenant, and it's beautiful. It's got the thumbs here and everything. This, these, these thumbs and their articulation is very much a, uh, a, a harbinger of how good or how uh, fresh these castings are. And also you can see her face here. Actually, I'll, I'll call this out with my flashlight so you can see it on camera because it's, it's worth noting. Um, oh, oh, I guess I turned on the, I guess it was stuck on. So I'll have to replace the, the battery there. But um, yeah, this cherub is a, a, a masterpiece. It's really, really beautiful. The reason, and so I've got the whole lid upstairs. I've got the four carvings. I've got, as you could imagine, I've got excellent reference material. Some of it is super secret. Um, and I have not yet built it. Oh, I love her feet in the back here. Nice little bare feet back here. I think that's really neat. Um, I haven't built my own Ark of the Covenant for a really specific reason, which is I have nowhere to put it. It is, it's like this big. It's like this tall off the ground. So there's no putting glass over it and make it into a coffee table. It's, it's what are you gonna drink your coffee like this? Where does it go? A friend of mine has one that's a wet bar in his house. <laughs> yeah, when you walk up to it, it plays the music of the arc from the movie and it separates and opens up and like dry ice comes out. It's really, really neat. I'm not gonna build it into a wet bar. I don't know when I am going to complete mine, but I will. It's all sitting up there in the loft in pieces. It's just, I have to know where it's gonna go before I, and I know somebody's like, send it to my house. Oh yeah, no, sure, that's, I'm not above doing that. <laughs> but I, I just have to know. So that's why it hasn't happened yet. But great question. All right, let's put this guy over here. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.